A region of interest, or ROI analysis, is a method of extracting data from a subset of voxels, also called a mask. One way to create a mask is to use an atlas, or a map that partitions the brain into anatomically distinct regions. Another technique is called the spherical ROI approach, in which a sphere of a given diameter is centered at a triplet of specified X, Y, and Z coordinates. These coordinates are often based on the peak activation of another study that uses the same or a similar experimental design to what you are using. In this tutorial, you will learn how to do both types of region of interest analysis. Let's begin by opening the WFU Pick Atlas toolbox you installed in the last video. The Human Atlas option will open an atlas of Broadman areas, cortical parcellations based on tissue structure and cell organization. From previous studies of cognitive control, we would expect our study to show significant bold activity in the dorsal anterior cingulate or DACC region, roughly corresponding to Broadman Area 32. Click on the region Broadman Area 32 in the left menu, and then click Add in the middle panel near the top of the screen. The middle panel highlights in red the voxels that belong to the mask you created, which you can examine by scrolling through the slices. You may think that the mask is too thin to adequately capture your region of interest. In that case, you can enter a number in the dilate field and click either the 2D or 3D buttons to dilate the mask by the number of voxels you specify in either two dimensions or three dimensions. Enter a value of 1 and then click 3D and observe how the size and extent of the mask changes. Now click the Save Mask button near the bottom of the screen. Let's call this mask BA underscore 32 and save it to the flanker directory that contains all of your subjects. Once you've created the mask, you can then extract each subject's contrast estimates from it. In this tutorial, we will extract the individual beta waves for incongruent and congruent separately, and then take the difference between the two. This allows us to determine how the incongruent and congruent beta weights combine to form the contrast estimate. First, click the results button from the SPM GUI and load the SPM.mat file from the folder Second Level Incongruent. Select the incongruent contrast and for Apply Masking, select Image. Load the BA32 image you created using the Atlas Toolbox and choose Inclusive. This will restrict our analysis to the voxels inside the mask. Select No for ROI analysis and None for the p-value adjustment. For the uncorrected p-value threshold, set the value to 1 and the extent threshold to 0. This threshold will show all the voxels in the mask that we selected. Right-click in any of the glass brain panels and select Go to Global Maximum, which highlights the current ROI that you've created. Then right-click again and select Extract Data, Whitened and Filtered Y, this cluster. This will output to the MATLAB terminal a list of each contrast estimate for each subject for each voxel in the mask. To make this list of numbers more manageable and easier to interpret, type the following. Inc equals mean y comma 2. This returns a set of 26 numbers representing the contrast estimate for each subject averaged over all the voxels in the ROI. We will now do the same procedure for the congruent contrasts, loading the spm.mat file from the second level congruent directory and selecting the same options as before. When you have displayed the results within the BA32 ROI, extract the data, and then from the MATLAB terminal, type con equals mean y comma 2. We now have a pair of 26 numbers, one pair per subject. We can enter this pair into a paired samples t-test using the following code. This will return four variables representing different parts of the hypothesis test. H is the result significant, 0 equals no, 1 equals yes, P is the p-value for the hypothesis, CI is the confidence interval, and STATS displays additional statistics, including the t-statistic, degrees of freedom, and the standard deviation. You may have noticed that the results from the ROI analysis using the anatomical mask were not significant. 
This may be because the ACC mask we created covers a very large region. Although the ACC is labeled as a single anatomical region, we may be extracting data from several distinct functional areas. Consequently, this may not be the best ROI approach to take. Another technique is called the spherical ROI approach that we talked about earlier. This is considered an independent analysis since the ROI is defined based on a separate study. To create this ROI, we will need to use coordinates from another study. Let's randomly pick a paper, such as Jan et al. 2016. In the results section, we find that there is a conflict effect for a Stroop task, a distinct but related experimental design also intended to tap into cognitive control, with a peak T statistic at MNI coordinates 0, 20, 44. To create this sphere, we will be using the Mars bar toolbox that we installed in the last chapter. From the SPM GUI, click on Toolbox and select Mars Bar. To create a sphere, click on ROI Definition, Build. From the Type of ROI drop-down menu, select Sphere and enter the coordinates 0, 20, 44. Enter a radius of 5, and for both the description of ROI and the label for ROI fields, enter DACC underscore Sphere. Save the file to your Flanker directory as DAC Sphere ROI. Before we generate the ROI as a nifty file, click on ROI definition and select view. Click on your newly created .mat file and make sure that the ROI is located in the region where it should be. If the sphere is in the right place, go back to the Mars bar ROI and select ROI definition and then select export. In the export ROIs drop down menu, select Image, and then from the Selection menu, click on the DACC Sphere ROI.mat file. Leave the Space for ROI image as a default, and select the Flanker directory as the output folder. Label the image as DACC Sphere. We now have a mask that we can use for our ROI analysis, and we can use the same method as we did previously on extracting data from the anatomical mask. I'll leave the screencast running so that you can see how to do this. If you did everything correctly, you should get the following results, indicating that there is a significant effect. Okay, nice job. So just as before, uh, we're at the very end, and it's a little less formal now. I'm not reading a script. But this is basically everything you would need to do to analyze a, a typical data set, typical fMRI data set from start to finish using SPM. Now, beyond this, there may be supplemental things like, I don't know, you know, how to do bias analysis in SPM, how to do parametric modulation, how to maybe use other toolboxes. But for now, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm glad you all stuck with this. I'm recording this April 13th, 2020. This is still during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> I'm indoors. It sucks. Uh, yeah, but, you know, able to still do this stuff. It's pretty good. Uh, thinking about blogging at some point, not totally sure if that's going to happen, but I don't know. I just don't know if there's anything else to be really be said. I look back on some what I wrote, I'm like, Jesus, the fuck was I thinking? But uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, everybody stay safe and keep uh, keep eating those burritos or whatever the whatever the fuck you're eating in quarantine. All right. Okay. Much love. See you guys later.